But what we do see is this word pharmakia translated into the word witchcraft and sorcery, and the Bible continually warning about this. Warning over and over again about this. So, again, are you, are you going to err on the side of safety? So, going back to the article, it says, but when you think about it, the spirit of drug-induced control is rebellion against God's plan. We are supposed to be under God's authority. God is sovereign, and we should have free will to accept God's sovereignty in every area of our life or to reject it. Of course, God has an organizational structure, such as the pastor being the head of the church and the man being the head of the family, but those things are created by God, so God is still in control. Especially if the good man of the house or the pastor of the church submits himself to God's divine authority in all matters. This next article is from uh, the Crusader magazine. It's entitled, Beware of the Sorcerer's Medicine, by Greg Ciola. And uh, I'll try to make all this available in a PDF format for you in, in the teaching. And it says, Do you find it rather disturbing that approximately 60% of the population is taking at least one pharmaceutical drug every day? 60% of the population taking one pharmaceutical drug every day. Most people wouldn't think anything of it. They just think it's the way it should be. You know, I can drug my body into good health. It is possible. You're you're putting something in your body on a daily basis that is a controlled poison. All drugs are controlled poisons. You know how I can prove it? Take a whole bottle of whatever you're taking and see what happens. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm saying if you did, most of the time it'll kill you. Even a whole bottle of aspirin will do that. Okay, that's how you know it's a controlled poison. You take a little too much of it, you know, you eat too many bananas, it's not going to kill you. You know, you eat too much health food or whatever, it's not going to kill you. Like a drug will. Some are taking up to 15 to 20 meds every day. And I, and I know that's true. We are, we are told that we are living during a time of the greatest medical breakthroughs in the history of the world, yet over 100 million Americans suffer from various health problems. Why has such a large majority of the world become dependent on pharmaceutical drugs? If medical science was cracked up to what it claims to be, we should be witnessing medical cures on an unprecedented level. Perhaps you're one of the hundreds of millions of people around the world that's ingesting a daily dose of pharmaceutical medicine. Is it possible that the pharmaceutical medical cartel has disease treatment and not disease cure in mind? See, that's what it's all about. It's about, it's about disease, not really even treatment. It's about really controlling the disease and thus propagating the disease so that they can continue to make profits off the disease. Why is there never a cure for anything ever invented? Why is that? Because if they invented a cure for cancer, and there's multiple cures for cancer, natural ones, but if they invented a cure for cancer, then the oncology field is gone, basically. All it would be is about curing it. Or, or prevention of cancer. If they invented a cure, oh, you know, Jerry's kids, we're going we're gonna to get a cure for, for uh, muscular dystrophy any day. They do that, that stupid telethon every year, and they raise all those millions and millions that go straight back into the coffers of the pharmaceutical companies and the medical. They're never, gonna, they're never going to invent a cure if it's left up to them. Why? Because it's how they make their living and their money. Pharmaceutical companies are a for-profit venture traded on the public stock market, and they're out to make as much money as possible. And the greed is unlike just about any other area on the planet. They make some drugs that they make for pennies and literally sell them into close to $1,000. Some of these profit margins are so obscene. I've, in fact, I should, have, I should have hit on that. I have hit on that on many of my previous emails. I have a couple different email lists. One's a health and one's a Christian. And uh, if you want on either one of them, just email me and let me know. But um, these, the, the profit margins are just unbelievable on most of the drugs that are out there. The unmitigated greed behind them. And then the fact that all drugs have side effects, which either means that you've got to take more of the, of the drug or you've got to take other drugs to counteract these side effects. They're all toxic to the liver. Okay, the liver is the chief site in the body where toxins are broken down. There's two enzyme pathways in the liver, cytochrome P450, phase 1 and phase 2 enzyme pathways. Okay, all drugs gum up that pathway, essentially. They, they kind of shut it down. 
And when you cannot detoxify poisons out of your body, carcinogenic compounds get into the bloodstream and set you up for cancer. Or who knows what else? Autoimmune system processes. It would be like... It would be like, um, you know, having an oil filter that was totally gummed up in your car and never replacing it. And that's why I do recommend cleansing, you know, of the liver and the colon and these types of things. We're being bombarded with more chemicals and more things now than we've ever been bombarded with in the history of mankind. It's a proven fact. According to Environmental Protection Agency, we're exposed over, uh, I believe it's over 75,000 chemicals on a daily basis, potentially, potentially. And of those, the vast majority are carcinogenic or cancer-causing. So these are things that, that um, are greatly interfering with our bodily processes. And yet there's very, very little press about it because the people that control the media and the newspapers and these types of things are typically heavily invested or a lot of times sponsored by the pharmaceutical companies in these things. We're going to be taking a really good in-depth look at the pharmaceutical companies and uh, seeing what they're really, really all about, and if they're really about getting you better and getting you well. This goes on to say, in this groundbreaking article, we're going to peel the veneer of lies away from the subject and attempt to expose the pharmaceutical industry for what it really is. This is one of the largest industries in the world with annual sales into the hundreds of billions of dollars. The sad part is, is that it has been around, it is built on the backs of people who are sick, diseased, and dying. In this greedy, power-driven world, er eradicating disease is not on the list of priorities with the medical establishment. See, it's built on the backs of the people that are sick, diseased, and dying. It's not about getting them better. It's about getting them addicted to these medicines and controlling them. And here's what happens. Here's another thing that happens. Get somebody on meds. Let's say they come in and they've got, let's, for example, say, heart problems. Well, let's get them on the litany of meds for the heart problems, okay? And then as they're doing this, all the while, more and more plaque is building up in the arteries until finally that artery goes closed and they have a heart attack or a CVA, okay, a cardiovascular accident or a stroke or something like that. A piece of plaque breaks off, goes into the brain, okay. They've got them on all these meds, and then what the meds did is they swept the symptoms of the plaque into the arteries under the rug long enough until they would actually have the heart attack. Now they've got to have surgery because they've swept the symptoms under the rug for so long that now they're a surgical candidate. And that's what the, that's what the meds typically do. They treat symptoms as though symptoms are something evil. Symptoms are, it, it's like, oh, my body's so stupid, it's giving me these symptoms. That's how we treat our bodies. Because, hey, i got this symptom and, and i got this chest pain. I'll just take angina, or I'll take uh, nitroglycerin to treat the chest pain. The reason the chest pain's there is because your arteries are getting so plaqued up that you're getting lack of blood flow or oxygen to the heart muscle. Now the heart muscle's starting to ache or cramp. That's why you're getting the chest pains. The nitroglycerin temporarily opens that pathway up, but it doesn't fix anything. What's the solution? Well, the solution for that would be something like the enzyme natokinase, which is an enzyme you can take. It's called a systemic enzyme. You take it on an empty stomach. It actually cleans out the arteries. You can do EDT chelation. Now, I don't even advocate the uh, intravenous kind because it's so expensive. 150 bucks a pop, two-hour session, 30 to 50 sessions. You're looking at four to five to six thousand dollars. Just do the EDTA oral chelation that you can buy online anywhere. And you do a couple capsules under your tongue at night before bed. Do about 1,000 milligrams a day. Do it with some natokinase. Clean your arteries out that way. Lecithin does that too. Lecithin helps to clean out the arteries. It helps to defat the liver and, and the, uh, the fat or the plaquing of the arteries. Um, phosphorus does that to a certain extent. It helps to take calcium deposits out of the arteries. There's a lot of different things where you can accomplish this. Now, the medical solution is put them on meds until they have the heart attack, sweep the symptoms under the, under the rug, and then when we'll do the surgery, we'll make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, and we'll look like we're really smart because we're surgeons, and we can go in there and we can um, put a stint in. It, it's ridiculous. Think about this. If you've got your arteries plaqued up, and now I'm, I'm just giving this as one example today, okay? I'm not going to go into every little example. I'm giving this as one example of the fallacy of medicine, okay? You put a stint in after a heart attack. You've got this, all these fatty plaques. They find this one area where it got so bad that the blood flow couldn't even get through. You put a stint, which is a little thing that reroutes the blood, 
And then the stints there, and what's going to happen? Well, the same thing's going to happen. You haven't done anything to fix the problem. 